And President Obama's decision to use force in Libya without congressional approval is now a hot topic here in the country. Now, you may recall liberals were quick to criticize President George W. Bush's actions in Afghanistan and Iraq, but by comparison, not only did Bush acquire the necessary congressional approval before attacking either nation, he also had, well, several dozen more international allies in his corner. And here with reaction, the host of Varney and Company on the Fox Business Network right after Imus. Stuart Varney and former White House press secretary, Fox News contributor uh, Dana Perino. He went to Congress. He got approval. You know, how many nations did he have by his side? And, you know, we were told we were going it alone. I think it was over 30. When uh, Right. The, 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 some of the liberals' favorite lines is mm -hmm. that President Bush was a unilateralist and uh, that multilateralism works so much better. Well, one... That's factually not true. And two, uh, multilateralism for multilateralism's sake can lead you to what you have now. I mean, the president risks making it look like the United Nations opinion is more important than that of the American people. It's certainly, and that's coming from I, both sides of the aisle. I totally agree. So Stuart. the situation is running out of control. The president is losing control of the so-called coalition. He's losing control of his own party. The president has dithered and delayed. He's fallen in love with the whole process of forming the coalition and forming policy. He's now in the position of reacting to events, following events, not leading them forward. He's lost control, and I think he's lost control of his own party, which is now bitterly critical of him not going to Congress to get he, war power but authority. This is the, he dithered and delayed yes. when it came to Afghanistan, sir. Six months. He dithered and delayed first Mubarak, then neutrality, then he doesn't support Mubarak. I mean, he dithered and delayed when it came to uh, Iran. Every single issue. It's not just foreign policy. Yeah. What about debt? What about spending? What about the budget? What about Japan? What we have about a pattern he developing. goes on and on and on? No, what it's about funny because price? there are people criticizing me because I dare to bring up the fact he's he's checked out. You know, the, 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 it's not the NCAA uh, uh, brackets that are important. It's that he has time for that. He has time for golf. He has time for Rio at a time when significant real issues are occurring. Well, and it's his priorities. And in some ways, from a communication standpoint, I feel like the White House seems almost offended that anybody's asking any questions. Tonight, if this the, were Bush, the National Dana? Security Council community, well, if, if, you know, if Bush had done that dot com as a URL that you know, Ed Gillespie and Carl Rove and I should have bought a long time ago because we'd have an award-winning site. But just tonight, um, the pool from uh, Rio is, is, or in, in, in Latin America is explaining that the White House now is clarifying what they've said repeatedly, that it's not regime change, the Libyan people who are going to decide, but he's got to go because he's lost our confidence. It, it is an increasingly incoherent and incomprehensible Where, where is the clarity of vision? Here we have a part where there is no clarity. What is our role? What are we doing? How do are we, we define trying to success? kill this guy? Or are we just are we establishing well, a different coalition? Message. Remember, what are we doing? Just right now, on I think on foxnews.com, the headline is, a deal is struck on who is going to lead the multilateral yeah. efforts for Libya. Oh. Really? Four days later? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think is interesting is if you, they, the elites, and in particular President Obama, very much criticized the Bush doctrine. Well, this is like the Bush doctrine, you know, by half. No, no, no. He said, and we played this at the start of the program, that whenever there's a humanitarian crisis, we have an obligation to engage ourselves. I guess we're going to Sudan. I guess we're going to be headed to Well, you to mentioned Mugabe. And Mugabe. you just wonder if the Zimbabwean people yeah. have lost the confidence Yemen. of Mugabe. Do we have the same position? We're not right. going to start dropping bombs there. Here, here, if George Bush did this, President Bush did this without going to Congress, you know, Ralph Nader saying he should be impeached, meaning Obama. Dennis Kucinich is now proposing to defund the war. Uh, Republicans want to know what, how do we define success? How do we pay for this? Uh, what is our end game? How do you win no boots on the ground? I mean, we, well, they would have been questions. unified in their position. Instead, what you have now is like a third, a third, and a third. So a third of the Democrats basically saying this is outrageous. A third tying themselves in knots trying to defend the yeah. position, and a third hiding and not commenting at all. Good point. But maybe that's why he's retreating from leading the coalition. He said, uh, building the international coalition is so important so we can all bear a share of the cost. Mm -hmm. Since when has economics been the driving Never. force yeah. behind this I don't know if he made cost money-wise or... In, he said, so we, won't bear, so we won't bear all the costs. That was, that was why it was important right, to establish I, an international let me, coalition. Let me ask a horrible question. With the president saying that Gaddafi needs to go repeatedly, what if Gaddafi survives? It looks like he will, doesn't it? 
God forbid. I think there's a, I, I, Look, all he needs to do is declare a ceasefire. We, they all leave, and he goes back to doing what he was doing. Then what? And they come do? back, and then the ceasefire, and then it's, he's, he's going to play cat and mouse like, like Saddam did. Isn't America's fundamental interest in the Middle East in general the free flow of oil? Of course, it's a lifeblood. That, that's, that's our economic interest in being there in the first place and taking whoa, whoa, any kind whoa, of action. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, it is. <laughs> Okay, oh, well, that's our economic that might interest. Be your is the economic free interest, flow of oil. Rick Leventhal tonight on Brett Baer's program had an interview with one of the rebels, and the way he described what they were looking for, they are looking for freedom. I mean, there Wait is. Was, an was it one of the rebels that we just played shouting Allahu no, Akbar? No, no, and it's it, it, that is a it is a piece worth watching because. Wait a minute, but listen, there are very credible people out here, including our own Secretary of State's office, including Time Magazine, Rolling Stone, NRO. Uh, Sky News, AP Cairo, that say those rebels that we may be supporting may be connected to al-Qaeda. In addition to that, okay, okay. Does that make let's, a difference? Well, let me, let's just say that the left hand ought to notify the right hand as to what's going on. We should have on. done this before. Because Secretary Clinton today was um, quoted saying that right. she has word that he's trying to leave, and President Obama said he has word that he's going to go. Give me some clarity of vision, please. Well, it's Mr. not President. my responsibility to give them not clarity. Not you, Preston. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to run. Good to see you both. Let not your heart be troubled. Our great, great, great American panel is next. And welcome back to Hannity. Time now to reveal the results of tonight's text vote. Now, we asked you if you thought President Obama should have received authorization from Congress before launching airstrikes in Libya. 87% said yes. 12% said no. And 1% were like Joe Trippi, and they're not sure. <laughs> and thanks to all of you for voting. Now, with more on that, let me bring in tonight's great, great American panel from the Daily Caller. Fox News contributor Tucker Carlson is here. Democratic strategist, Fox News contributor Joe Trippi is with us. She, a former speechwriter for Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. Elise Jordan is back. Thank you all. Uh, what do you make of the text vote? Uh, the text vote. Uh, should, should they have gotten con congressional approval? I think that they should have at least gone before Congress and open debate. I think that it would have forced Obama to, act, to answer some tough questions, such as what's the end game of all of this? What is it going to cost? And it's all very undefined and vague, and it's very troubling that we're in a and, third and, uh, war. Are we trying to get Gaddafi or not get to Gaddafi? I mean, they, 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 Joe. Well, you got a lot of confusion you got here. Well, we did get the UN approval. I mean, I got to give him credit. We we bowed at the altar of the anti-Semitic, anti-American United Nations. I mean, this is but this isn't a, a partisan issue. Just like the 87 percent in the text vote, there are Democrats like Dennis Kucinich and others saying that he he should have gotten. All right, but, but, so, but I mean, it's not but, like but you, this is but, left or right. But do you think it's wrong that the president? First of all, he should have done. If he was going to do it, we didn't need UN approval. We could have done this 14 well, days not, ago when it would have mattered. He, I mean, he literally, we had the not, rebels we on the. We're not going in unilaterally, and if he if he were, yeah, he'd have to get. I would def, definitely think he should get. Are you US, upset US about US the Congress. conflicting message? Get Gaddafi, don't get Gaddafi. No, I, I think I agree that we if we're going to do this, we should have done a lot sooner. I think everybody believes How that. Do you but I also think it's here? hard to do that without, it's hard to corral the entire world in, 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 into going along with Tucker's something in, 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 in a nanosecond. Well, success is when the French create a new committee within a committee. Last every time I to talk. Boss America, but in the most loving way. Yeah. <laughs> to, to, to command American troops. I, I don't care. Lots of presidents, in effect, act unilaterally when they declare war. I'm bothered by we're the bipartisan, war, we're not declaring war, right. when they create commit American troops to battle, as this president just did. I'm bothered by the bipartisan assumption that it's somehow America's moral obligation to step in on behalf of people who don't have the vote around the world. This, and, and Republicans, by the way, uh, seem to agree with this, or some of them do, and it's well, wrong. Do, yeah. well, we have an obligation a... to defend our national interest, period. That's the only time you commit Americans to battle, period. Well, it sets such a bad precedent, because by this standard, we can intervene in Bahrain, we can in intervene in Yemen. And this was, you know, claim, uh, saying that we're doing this on humanitarian grounds, Three million children die a year of hunger. A million die of malaria. I, it, a million people hadn't this died was, yet. This was one of the few places that you could get the international community to say this is where we're going to go. I mean, you couldn't have done that in Egypt. You could. I don't think it was there. You couldn't have done it in Bahrain. Bahrain Let me ask you a question. I, uh, where there's this, a, there's where a great. You had to get the internet. The, the Arab League, a whole bunch of things no, we happened. Don't. No, we no, don't. No, we it don't. It happened here, and it didn't happen elsewhere. So right. that, that, that allowed it to. Uh, for this. John Hawkins on Townhall.com. I thought he had a great column. 
because all uh, granted there's opposition Ralph Nader and Dennis Kucinich and Gerald right. Nadler I mean the hard left and Maxine Waters and and some others but Markey who we heard from earlier and Republicans wait a minute is this a rush to war is Obama doing this because Gaddafi insulted him is this war over oil John Haw Hawkins raised a great column you know where are the massive protests you know um, you know shouldn't we uh, have tried to talk him out of this uh, is Obama a chicken hawk you know, all the questions that were brought up about George Bush. Has he failed? The surge has failed? The war is lost? Where is all that criticism that liberals offered Bush? <sighs> I, you know, it's, I think he's getting a pass on this one because I think it deserves real scrutiny. I think if you look at it, the Arab League and the French and the British did an incredible job of pressuring Obama towards a war that he was very reticent to enter. And, I agree well, with you. And, I, I think and that's it. He didn't war. want to do this, did Well, he? and it's to help no, Sarkozy. Clear. Sarkozy is yeah. in a... I mean, I agree with that. Year. I mean, I think Hillary Hillary Clinton Tucker. had to had to like make uncharacteristically you know, sort of quiet. Join that like and push it. Well, it over. he should have listened to his instincts, right? He should be reticent. You should be reticent to act and to commit American troops on behalf of people you know nothing about, which is what we just did. People we still describe as the rebels because we know nothing well, else about them. Right, what about them? all these reports that these rebels are? Associated with Al Qaeda, that's did exactly, not anybody know this? So they've got the full well, might of the United States military on their behalf, yeah. and it turns out they may hate us. I mean, well, so, yeah. so we may get an Islamic caliphate. Like it could be worse well, than Omar I mean, Gaddafi. Yeah. Well, we're intervening well, it, in a tribal society. It could be worse. Society. It could be better. I mean, we, it's a tribal society. The, the the issue here is with the Arab League, with with France, with Britain, with these other. It, with the UN saying we're going to go in, look with all due respect we going to, to our, especially our allies in Great and Britain did. and France. With all, with all due respect, I don't think American foreign policy should be based on what they think or what they do. We've got to do what's in our interest because we see it's right. And if he well, so it's in our interest to keep to help to stay silent and let Gaddafi keep killing people. Well, I mean, I don't gonna, think it's it, in it our, should have then started interest. earlier when literally the rebels had I agree had with that. I mean, surrounded. I think there are a lot. I I agree. I got to break the yelling at me right here. We're it's go very in. painful. Uh, more with our great, great, great American panel coming up. And we continue with our great American panel. So uh, in the age of new Obama civility post the Tucson tragedy, Barney Frank calls Republicans morally stupid and bigots. Troll tape. During the recent debate on the continuing resolution, the very conservative group that now runs the Republican Party tried to undo health care and they tried to undo environmental measures and they went after Planned Parenthood, they went after public radio. Not a single amendment was offered to undo the repeal of this policy. Because it turns out a good sign, even the bigots ain't stupid. At least, at least tactically, perhaps morally. Morally stupid bigots. What happened to the age of civility, Trippy? Every time we do this, there isn't any such thing. We all, each party, when it comes their turn, says we're going to be civil, and it's, it's garbage. No one's going to well, be civil. We're civil on this program, now, well, right, On Tucker? that thing, I'm, I'm, well, he I'm said they were civil. Except when you want to give the you death penalty I, to Michael Vick. Can I just say, and, and I, yeah. I walked that back slightly, though I do think we ought to be a lot madder about Michael uh, Vick. I'm just te I'm, I'm not teasing. I'm teasing. No, but here's, but, this, okay. it's Barney Frank specifically. Anybody who lives in Washington can tell you there is no member of Congress who mistreats other human beings personally, mm -hmm. more consistently and more harshly Good than point. Barney Frank. He is really a monster. I've seen it personally. It's really? awful. Yes, Elise, is this well, this is, this is just why Americans are so fed up with political discourse. When you know, he's not putting an argument out there; he's just throwing around some it, mean accusations, and there's no. Well, and President tomorrow, Obama, and tomorrow so there'll be a say, Republican that yeah. does the same thing. But I mean, this is you know, and maybe not as standard, maybe not as crass as Barney Frank does it, but it's going to happen. They're going to keep doing this. But it's and the, I think that's why the, I've said I think there's going to be a third party or an independent candidacy what, the that comes party? up. No, that just says. Screw both these the parties part because the they're party. arguing say, and beating each other up and they're not passing anything. Everyone's feelings so hurt. Maybe because I was like on Crossfire for a long time. I was like, come on, lighten up. Get you know, it's it. like elbows are thrown. Oh. It's politics. The, the ideas matter. People yeah. are a little rough. I, I never understood why Rick Sanchez got so offended by Jon Stewart. I'm like, He's a very it, sensitive it, man. Right? Get over it. I mean, you're in the public eye. You better get yeah. used to it. Uh, all right. Herman Cain um, says this. He says, the role of Muslims in America is not to convert the rest of us to the Muslim religion that I resent I push back and reject them trying to convert the rest of us the role their role is to be allowed to practice their religion freely just like we should be allowed to practice our religion freely and not try to con convert the rest of us some people are offended by that 
Well, it's his First Amendment right to, you know, free speech and say what he thinks, but it also is freedom of religion within the First Amendment. And so I think that he has kind of shown that he's not going to be a presidential. It wasn't very presidential to say well, that. What, what, the role of Muslim is not to convert the rest of us. Is he, is he not maybe suggesting, and I'm, maybe I'm interpreting this the wrong way, and tell me if you think I am, is he not saying that, hey, we don't need Sharia courts. We don't need Sharia law. We don't need to be, as the Ground Zero uh, imam said, more Sharia compliant. Is that is that what maybe what he's referring to? Well, he might have been going in that direction, but then I think it's just dicey area within American religion because ba plenty of Baptists try to convert. You know, yeah, I mean, every religion has. But some I think he was more afraid thing, of Sharia because of, I of think the implications. There, right, That's what I my think, guess is. But, but I'm I guessing. think we all try to read too much into all this stuff, and he, and he's on ground that I just think is is. What, what I understand so what he's trying to say. It? Well, I mean, I think he was, I think he was saying, I think he, I don't know what he was saying. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> well, he has, he has said that he was arguing, but, or a spokesman has said he was arguing against Sharia. I think everyone, right. most people agree I would, yeah. that yeah. it's, if you sincerely believe your religion, whatever it is, is the path to salvation, you have an obligation to tell other people about it, no matter right. what it is. And I don't think anybody's offended by that. Yeah, but I mean, but I think, it, we, but it, look, we, we follow sometimes the Great out of, Britain, out of PC. they had Sharia courts. You know, there's a, there is a, good, I think there Americans is a reason why. are way too smart to ever let that enter into. Well, I don't think Wait a minute, so. I think, a, I think there's a lot Bay. of stuff going on there that we do at, in the, because we're so PC, they will let it. Oh, no, I think Jersey. that multiculturalism yeah. And a case yeah. in Florida this week. And I think week. that it's a free speech issue at the root of it, because right. why, why is it, you know, do people get such threats of violence when they have debate within Islam? Yeah, but, but they, uh, I mean, the judge look, said had, he's going to look at, you know. Look, we've had all this in our own politics. Forget get religion out of it. We've had all this back and forth in the polarization. We've had one guy in Arizona do something stupid and say there's right. a gun. Well, there are multiple cases guys, like a woman We are out of time. Thanks for being with us. Good panel tonight. Let not your heart be troubled. Greta's next. See you tomorrow night.